This morning I had the opportunity to present the results of Invigor 210, which is a phase two trial of a uh, novel anti pdl one agent and immunotherapy compound um, in patients with um, metastatic urothelial carcinoma or locally advanced urothelial cancer. And these patients had been on first-line cisplatin or carboplatin-based chemotherapy, and they progressed either on or following that chemotherapy, and they were treated in the second line or beyond, so they could have had other chemotherapy regimens with atezolizumab. This was a single arm trial, so all patients that were enrolled onto the trial received trial therapy. So the other FDA approved agents that improve overall survival benefit for patients who failed platinum-based chemotherapy are none. And so all the chemotherapy that we give in this setting is palliative and much of it has toxicity. Um, these patients tend to be older, frail, um, and have comorbidities either from their cancer or from the previous treatment of their cancer, like peripheral neuropathy in their hands, renal insufficiency, and, and other diseases. So they're a challenging population to treat with chemotherapy. Uh, 311 patients were treated in cohort two on Invigor 210. Um, so patients in, the, in this category who've failed platinum-based chemotherapy um, were enrolled onto the study. Uh, they had to have a reasonable performance status or functional status. Um, they could have had, as I mentioned, any prior number of lines of chemotherapy. And importantly, they could also have pre-existing renal impairment that really limits our ability to treat patients with systemic chemotherapy sometimes. Um, everyone on trial submitted tumor tissue that was either archived tumor tissue or fresh biopsies for biomarker testing for PDL1, which is the target of atezolizumab. Um, they did that in screening, so we had the results of, of all of that data, but um, both investigators and patients were blinded. Patients were then, uh, if eligible, treated on protocol therapy with intravenous atezolizumab once every three weeks. Um, they had assessments by CAT scans, MRIs, every nine weeks during therapy. And in cohort two, as long as they were deriving a clinical benefit, patients were able to stay on therapy until the investigator felt like the patient was no longer deriving clinical benefit, the patient withdrew from study. Given the fact that there are no FDA-approved agents in this setting, this was a reasonable approach. So the primary, the study had two primary endpoints. One is a, a traditional endpoint of resist um, response criteria. Another one was modified resist, which really does capture some of the atypical response patterns that we see with immunotherapy. For the entire population, the objective response rate was 15%. And for those selected patients, who overexpressed the target of uh, PDL1, those IC23 patients with greater than 5% expression, the response was 26%. And this included 11% uh, had a complete response, which is really unprecedented in next line, second line and beyond urothelial cancer trials. Well, I think that you know the, the numbers are impressive and, and certainly met the primary endpoint which was above 10%, which is the, the benchmark for historical control chemotherapy studies in the second line and beyond. But beyond just the number of the response, which really the durability of the response, with patients staying on protocol therapy, really beyond what is expected um, in, uh, when you compare it to chemotherapy studies. And this included not just the patients who were traditionally responding to chemotherapy with a shrinkage of their tumor, but people who had measurable stable disease. So those patients seem to be benefiting as well. The message for doctors watching is that um, there's, there's interest and there are agents that are for the first time in many, many years um, looking like they're going to have an impact on the treatment uh, of these cancers. Um, I think it's exciting that so many different investigators and, and, and uh, different sponsors are looking at urothelial cancer. And um, so I'm looking forward to, to what's to come in the next years.